Hi, Courtney. So good to see you. We're with Courtney Boyd Myers, otherwise known as CBM, the founder of Akua. And we, Bumble Root will now be providing Akua on our regenerative marketplace. So we wanted to have a conversation to learn more about the company and the amazing kelp and sea greens. So CBM, can you tell us a little bit about the history of Akua and why, why kelp, why sea greens? Yeah, of course. So I visited my first kelp farm a couple of years back. And it's basically an open water farm, similar uh, setup as like oyster farming, but all of the kelp's grown on ropes. And we pulled up a rope and the seaweed was growing off of it. And I ate it and I was like, this is amazing. And I had always loved seaweed. Um, so when I learned really about the practice of ocean farming, um, I became totally hooked. I'd been looking for something to do um, in my sort of Captain Planet mindset. And when the kelp farm is in the water, it's kind of like if you had planted a rainforest in the middle of the sea. So the kelp, it's a macro algae that photosynthesizes. So it, it gets its energy from carbon and it converts that into energy as it grows and it grows really fast. So these kelp farms are incredible for carbon sequestration. They're also filtering nitrogen from the sea. Um, they're so efficient actually that they're about 20 times more effective at pulling down CO2 than a land-based plant can pull it out of the air. So I was like, oh my God, you know, and I was talking to scientists who said, you know, literally if we had a kelp farm the size of the Amazon rainforest, we could reverse ocean acidification. And I'm a huge fan of the ocean. You know, when I grow up, I want to be a mermaid and have, you know, really always thought about like, how can I do my small part in, 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 in improving uh, this, this beautiful part of our planet that I love so much. And then uh, I also got really excited by the fact that a lot of the ocean farmers are fishermen who aren't making a great living in, in their traditional trade and the ocean farming practice and selling the kelp to brands like Akua uh, provides them with an additional revenue stream. So I just, the economic and the environmental pieces together, coupled with the fact that I just love eating seaweed and it's super healthy for us to eat humans, uh, is why I started Akua in the first place and our first product, kelp jerky. That's amazing. Um, and 20 times more carbon than a land-based plant that kelp can sequester. That's huge. And it's because it grows so fast. So in terms of fast growing plants on the planet, bamboo is number one and kelp's number two. And kelp's not technically a plant. Again, it's like part of the algae kingdom, but. And then these farms, are they grown with other sea plants or oysters or anything? Or how, is it purely kelp? Like how does someone become a kelp farmer? It's a great question. Uh, so a lot of these farms are grown in an ecosystem with shellfish, so scallops, mussels, and oysters. Um, they're not grown with any other seaweeds at the moment, so it's really just that system. A lot of the farmers just grow the kelp, and uh, to become an ocean farmer, it's similar to the way you would get a license to go and start an oyster farm. You would basically, you know, show up to town hall and, and request that license. You need boats, you need buoys, you need ropes. You need the spores, which are like the kelp seeds, and those are grown in a nursery. Uh, and the way that the spores are collected is, is by going out and finding a pregnant mama kelp and bringing her into a tank, cutting her open and taking the spores and then attaching those to spools um, which are put on, onto the ropes and as the kelp starts to grow from a spore into the you know larger aquatic plant um, they're then put out onto the farms they grow um, up to six to ten feet long and and then harvested or actually we're in the middle of the kelp harvest right now so farmers are going out checking on their crop wondering should I leave it in a week later and maybe make more money because it'll be heavier or do I take it out now and all, all that kind of fun stuff's going on. Wow. And so then when the kelp is harvested, is, can you tell us a little bit about traditionally what kind of food products have been made from kelp or even other uses of kelp and how Kua is using kelp and your vision of kelp in the food industry going forward? Yeah, of course. So uh, until 
Akua came around, the majority of the kelp that was being grown was uh, sold into restaurants and chefs were using it in all different ways from sauces to accompanying fish to seaweed salads. Um, there's a company up in Maine that uh, we're friends with and they do like a kelp kimchi. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to look at this as um, what if we could replace the most or one of the most unsustainable form of um, agricultural systems like animal agriculture with one of the most sustainable which is kelp farming so we looked at the meat alternative um, track and came up with a kelp jerky and the idea with our kelp jerky is it's a 70 percent kelp mushrooms chickpea flour pea protein nutritional yeast uh, and and can really tell that story of, of that link between food and climate change um, with every bag that we sell to consumers uh, but kelp can be used for so many things, and that's what's so exciting about it. Aku will always be a food company. You know, we might go into beverage, but um, you know, outside of Akua, people are using kelp for beauty. Um, La Mer has a has a very expensive line of kelp-based products. Um, they source all their kelp from France. Uh, there's a lot of government money and Exxon Mobil money going into looking at kelp as a viable biofuel. One of the problems and, and hindrances to the growth of that market is just how cheap oil is today. Um, but eventually kelp could be a, a real viable option. And, uh, and then also kelp's an incredible fertilizer. Uh, and uh, the last is uh, some people are using kelp to um, feed their livestock. And uh, it's not kelp specifically. There's another type of seaweed that then they feed it to cows. Um, the scientists say that they're farting less, so less methane in the atmosphere. That's incredible. I've read about that. And I also have a friend who has a, uh, they distribute product for a, a, a bio amendment company. So instead of chemical based fertilizers, um, mm -hmm. it's a kelp based fertilizer. Um, yeah. And it adds, along with many other things, adds life back into the soil instead of just adding minerals or, or chemicals. So it's really cool to hear how kelp is being used all over the place. Um, and do you, you also have a pasta, right? Can you tell us about the pasta? It's super simple. So it's not like a a bonza pasta where you have the you know combinations of, of different ingredients linked to the chickpea. Um, it's we take the kelp out of the water, we blanch it. So this this brown macroalgae turns bright green and we blanch it in hot water. And then we um, put it through basically a giant calamari cutter and it's uh, then cut into noodle shapes. Um, like the way you have like a bag of fresh pasta and we dehydrate it and we bag it in balls. So um, our pasta is, it's literally just kelp cut into a noodle form and you take it and you rehydrate it and then you can cook it like a pasta or a veggie. That's incredible. And we have a few minutes left. Um, right now it'd be weird to not talk about what's going on in the world with COVID-19 and the way it's impacting food supply chains. I know for Bumble Root, it's impacting our supply chain of coconut water. We're really taking a look at it, how we can source more domestically just because from a, a logistic standpoint and looking forward, it, it's just so unsure when supply chain, when, when ships will be going across oceans, if you know, hopefully things go back to normal soon, but we just, we, we don't even know. Um, and in Montana here, we've just been talking a lot about how do we grow more of our food locally? How do we create resilient economies? And just curious about your opinion of how kelp can you know, help feed, feed people locally within North America. Um, obviously, we want kelp to go everywhere, but how can it be used as a tool during this when there is some uncertainty of how food is being delivered and just your kind of ideas on, on how, how that might look. Yeah. You know, we are living in a world where about 98% of seaweed consumed today is sourced from Asia. Um, we source a hundred percent of our seaweed from North America, specifically in Maine. Um, we have one farm in Rhode Island, but everything else is from Maine. And uh, we're producing, you know, our, we're producing kelp uh, and we work with farm, sorry, we're producing kelp jerky and we work with farmers who are producing the kelp, so we don't own the farms. Um, just the farmers on the Northeast coast are producing over a million pounds of kelp a year. 
in Alaska, they're producing about 3 million pounds of kelp a year. And so that's about enough kelp for, for everybody to enjoy some kelp jerky every day in the States. And I think that as we look at other markets, we would encourage people to buy seaweed locally as opposed to you know, buying from the States like we've been buying from Asia. Um, kelp can be, you know, if it's dehydrated, it's easier to ship, but generally it's, it's shipped wet and frozen. It can be very, very heavy. Um, and, you know, the states were really new to kelp farming in, in Norway and in parts of Europe, like in France, they've been kelp farming for hundreds of years. Um, and they have amazing supply chains there. So as a comparison, Norway produces about 30 million pounds of kelp a year, which is pretty cool. Oh, um, what do they use it for? All sorts of, you know, they, they it's an ingredient as well. It's a, a big, um, part of the nutrition and supplement industry too. I, you know, you go into any CVS or Dwayne Reed, you can find kelp in the supplement section. Uh, and so, you know, we, we decided, well, why not have kelp farming, you know, here in the US? Why not support the US supply chains, even if it's small? And that means our company has to grow in step with the US supply chains, but that's more important to us than scaling really, really fast and then just sourcing from Asia because like our growth outpaces what the local supply chain does here. Thank you. What what else do you want us to know about Akua and kelp? What what do you want to leave people listening to this who might this is their first time really learning about kelp and the benefits for the environment, for the climate, from a health perspective? What what do you want to make sure that they really remember? I think that most food items that you or me we ate today they require a significant amount of resources of our planet like dry land fresh water a lot of fertilizer or animal feed and kelp what's so cool about it is it requires none of that it grows abundantly in ocean water that it's cleaning as it grows so when you think about future foods and creating foods that are linked to climate change um it's just amazing. So while seaweed might seem really weird, uh, I would definitely give kelp a chance. Thank you, CBS. <laughs> and everyone listening, let us know what you think of the kelp jerky. Um, it'll be available on the Bumble Root website this week. Yeah, our bestseller, Sesame and Nori Sea Salt. Yes, and I can personally vouch for it. I tried it um, at Summit on the Mountain this weekend, or the summer, last summer, um, and it was delicious. It's you got to open up a new bag because we just changed the recipe. It's even Ooh, more delicious. I will. I will. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah.